Welcome to the NC Spin After Spin. Additional comments from our panelists just available on our state, on our website. I want to ask all of you, what do you wish you had said on last week's show, but you didn't? Joe Maverick, I'll start with you. Well, uh, with Margaret Spelling's civil rights issue, um, I think one of the things that she should focus on early is the fact that the university system consistently produces at least 3,000 teachers a year less than the public schools in North Carolina need. And one of the unspoken missions of the university system is to produce the teachers that are needed to teach the next generation of North Carolina leaders coming into the university well, system. Just, let me question you on that. What do you do to force kids to go into education when they don't want to go into education? You make that department or school very attractive, and I don't see any motions like that. For example, <coughs> the flagship at Chapel Hill just eliminated the undergraduate education program and now has some kind of a hybrid uh, uh, five-year program. And the new uh, <coughs> dean of that school said that he was looking for vision to come from within his faculty that has lost 30% of their students in the last seven years. Chris, what do you wish you'd have said on last week's show? Well, we did talk about how the, uh, I think Ruth was talking about how the uh, response to Hurricane Matthew and Governor McCrory's leadership and I was on television that accounts for a good bit of his push in the polls and what it did was push HB2 sort of off the, out of the headlines. What sort of crept back in a little bit this past week, we'll see how much, when a company decided it was, it was moving its headquarters to Richmond instead of Charlotte, and specifically the economic developer said HB2 was a big factor. Uh, and ironically, that happened right after McCrory's Secretary of Commerce said HB2 isn't ha having any effect on the economy. So I think the combination of those was a story during the week that the governor, I'm sure, hopes goes away and we can get back to not talking about HB2. John, what do you wish you'd have said on last <coughs> week's show? Well, we were talking about the election, early voting, sense of momentum, and I, I know this is a, a bit dangerous or, or precipitous to say this, but based upon the early numbers from early voting, uh, the Democrats are underperforming. Uh, the Republicans are about where they would, you would expect them to be. The Democrats are not. It's unaffiliated voters that are turning out in, in larger numbers to early vote. Now, let me just hasten to add, number one, it may be a bad comparison to 2012 because there were differences in the way early voting is unfolding. And number two, I am still of the opinion, and I think the evidence is best on my side, that early voting does not change the percentage of people who vote. It changes when they vote. It is convenient for lots of people. It doesn't actually increase overall turnout very much, if at all. So I'm not sure this tells us much about the uh, November election. What it does tells, uh, tell us, in my opinion, is, as was said during the show, Democrats and Republicans are less enthusiastic about their presidential candidates today than they were four years ago. Yeah, or even in 2008. Rufus, what do you wish you'd have said on uh, last week's show? Well, Tom, I wish I'd had time to say how wonderful the people are that helped me with the Super Kids program. You've been a great supporter all those years. We had our meeting. We had a wonderful little girl who uh, overcome a lot of obstacles. Food was delicious again, by oh, the way. Oh, absolutely. That, well, that fried chicken got gone when you got there <laughs> real quickly. And we had one little girl that has faced all sorts of obstacles. And you know what? She has been admitted to the University of North Carolina Medical School. And Joe, we are producing teachers uh, out of our 32 graduates that have graduated out of college with our help. Uh, over 12 of them are teachers and very proud of it. So I'm, I wish I'd had time to say it, and I'm saying it. And well, thank congratulations you, on your Super Kids program. You've, you've given thousands and thousands of dollars and uh, lots of help to a Well, lot good of people like you. I, I don't have you. I'm, you I'm not as rich as Joe. All yeah. right. Well, thanks for watching <laughs> the After Spin. We'll have more video all during the week on ncspin.com.